Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 31. In this episode, we are covering chapters 27 through 31 from the book Six of Crows. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry. From Nashville, Tennessee, this is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by the wonderful Lee Bardugo. Moi Savieni casters. Hello, hello. It has been a crazy day. It has. So... But, but we have some people to thank first. We do. <laughs> we have our friends at Westfield, New York. Hello. And then in Prague, Czech Republic. That's so fun. It is. And Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Wow. I'd like to be quarantining there. Absolutely. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I would love to be in Prague. Oh, yeah. It's so beautiful there. Yeah. Um, Lots of history. It is, it's just such a pretty city. Yeah. Um. So, it has been crazy week, crazy day for me. It has been insane, but um, it's calming down now because we're doing this. And then after this, I get to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a bonus. It is such a bonus. Just going to bed. I cannot wait. Oh, my gosh. So, um, I have something to admit. This is really funny. Um, so, I sat down on Monday, Memorial Day, to do my... Um, reading for the week so get ready for the podcast because that's what i always do i don't do a lot of reading during the weekend i read my other books but i start this on monday and then get everything done before you know thursday so anyways i started reading and i got so into it i finished it <laughs> the entire book like i mean i've read it before but like yeah. i couldn't stop so memorial day like in four hours i just told chris i was like i'm sorry i I have to finish this. Like, I was so, so... It's just at this really juicy part. Right, yeah. And I got so into it. So, yes. I, I've finished Six of Crows <laughs> on this reread already. But don't worry, guys. We're not going to, like, like fly through it. But I just... um I couldn't put it down. I really couldn't. I did that last week. I read this portion last week. Like, I read all the way through 231 Yeah. last week. So I had already read it. Yeah. Well, it's it's just it's that part of the book. It is. It, it's getting really We're at good. the crescendo. Don't you see how like incredible Six of Crows is? Not saying compared to it's just it's very different it from very the Grisha trilogy. Yes. It's so different. It is. It's I mean, we're in the same world, but it's it's written differently. The pace of the book, I feel I feel like even like where we are at the crescendo, like there's just like dun 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 dun. I don't know in the trilogy. Well, there's still a lot of like mystery. Oh my gosh, yeah. And it just it gets crazy. It gets worse. <laughs> the it's mystery worse. does. All right. I mean, just saying. I mean, we get another, we have another book after this. So yes. So it's going to, uh, it's just, it's getting so good. And I just totally got into it. And like, it was actually a wonderful Memorial Day because I love to sit down and read and being able to do that. And we didn't have our child with us <laughs> because he was spending the night with his grandmother. So... That was the first time ever that we got to sleep in, sleep in on a day where we woke up without a child. Right. We've always, he's always had to like stay over and the next day we went to work. I've never gotten and to wake you, up yeah. without a kid. You don't have, yeah, I don't have to work. So. <laughs> oh my God. That was good. It was. Well, I'm glad. Glad you got to enjoy that. Yes, it was fantastic. We went on our first trip. Yes. So. How was it? It, well, it was our first trip, like I said last week, our first trip of the year. We typically go on three or four a year. Right. And because of things um, yeah. that I don't really want to mention because I'm tired of talking about it, we had, we had to wait to. until now, really, to to get out. And we, we were social distanced. <laughs> we were in a creek. Um, I saw the pictures. Those are cute. Yeah, we went gym mining in a creek. You had to buy a little permit. Aww. to to go digging i actually did find an emerald oh yeah it's very little but i found one and we found a few other come on was cute little things right <laughs> that's awesome um and then um i got back yesterday so i feel very rushed and i have no idea what day it is anymore and it's just it's been kind of a whirlwind but it, it's been fun right of course and then i was walking out of the door to come today and there's a man <laughs> There's a man in my yard, and <laughs> I know everyone is going to probably come at me because I am the emotionless person that, you know, we've talked about that a few times. Yeah. Um, but this guy clearly is down on his luck, and oh. he um, 
said he hadn't been to work in three weeks. He got laid off. He's um, put in a bunch of applications and he's even running low on gas. But can he like clean up my yard a little bit and, you know, for a little bit of money? And I was like, let me just give you money. Let me just give you gas and you can be on your way and it's fine. And he's like, no, I really want to work. I, I don't want to take anything. That's not like what I'm doing. And we got into a whole conversation and um, I ended up giving him my card. Because those of you that don't know, I work for a community college and we have a really good like workforce program. And I, you know, told him that we have all kinds of free training that we would be more than happy to to help him with. And um, he awesome. said he doesn't want to hand out. And I don't know. But so it like it was very emotional for me because yeah. I felt bad in that moment. But then I also it was like I got in my brand new car and I locked up my house. Yeah, and I'm coming here, and I'm able to do this. So it put a lot of things in perspective. That as stressful as everything is, as much as I complain about my job and yeah. you know stress from having to clean up from tornadoes and everything All else, that. like yeah. I'm in a really good spot. Absolutely. And so it really put things in perspective. Yeah, it's a good. It's always good to have that moment where because we get out of control and forget and don't realize how grateful we really are, um, and it's just. It's hard. It I is. mean, it, we get too stressed out, and then I, I'm always grateful for those moments where I get, I kind of rewind myself back into myself, and I realize, like, okay, you know what? I really do like life is actually good for me. Yes, I am. I'm very blessed at the moment, but to well, other people, we live like queens. Yeah, exactly. So well, that's that's, a, that's yeah. beautiful what you did. I think that's awesome. It yeah, sounds like you so, really helped him. I hope so. I of hope course, you cool, did. So. That sounds wonderful oh well that's yeah. cool so that was my i guess feel good moment yeah i don't know if you want to call it that but. well yeah it is so i um i've got this um lady at work who's retiring who has helped like train me and she sits next to me and i like we've known for like a month so i was like kind of sad and bummed out that she was leaving and then today because she leaves tomorrow and then today my other friend told us that she's leaving on the 12th. So I had like this little pity party at work <laughs> because I was like, oh, my friends are leaving. I was so sad. Aww. Like I really am. Um, I've got other friends at work. I just, um, I was, I was just like, this is too much. Whatever. Why is everybody going? <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah. it'll be okay. It was an emotion. It was, when I look at it now in perspective, I was having a total pity party for myself <laughs> and it's really pathetic and i haven't stopped all day like i've just like not stopped since i touched the floor this morning and i am um, i was so tired this morning too like i wanted to, like there's some mornings where i'm up and i'm like yeah whatever but this morning i really could have used more sleep even though i got good sleep last night i just i wanted to sleep so badly <laughs> but Hey, that's what the weekend's for, and we're almost there. We, yes, we are almost there. Okay, kids, let's get on into the Grishaverse. That's what y'all are here for. <laughs> so, not best friend podcast. No, we should catch. Well, we we just catch up on the podcast. We you do. guys enjoy it. Whatever. We love y'all. <laughs> y'all love us. You love so, us. Okay, so we're still we're still in part five, right? Are we still in part five, or do we start part five? We're just starting part five. Okay. Yes, we're starting part five, which is the ice does not. Forgive. It doesn't. Mm -mm. I love ice, though. I love Minneapolis. I, I love Minnesota. Nope. Oh, <laughs> my perfect world. Oh, real quickly, watch that show you recommended, Upload. Yeah, and isn't it cute? it just reminded me when they're, like, turning and you can change, like, seasons. Uh-huh. And I was like, I saw, like, how you could change it to, like, a winter setting. I was like, that is what I would do. <laughs> ah, sorry, I got really excited and hit the mic. <laughs> My hands, I, I talk with my hands a lot. Very excitedly. So for those of you guys that out there that have not seen it, it's on Amazon Prime. It's a really cute it's show. Cute. And um, it's not depressing. Like it's about it's about it's death, fun. but it's not depressing. Yeah. And there's just this part where like in the afterlife you get to pick like what kind of season that you want to live in, like mm -hmm. summer, spring, whatever. And you it's like this knob. Yep, and it's just really cool because he's turning this knob and it's like the trees are going like from summer to spring to fall to winter. And it was just it reminded me when we're talking about the ice does not forget. <laughs> so, okay. Tangent 101 right here. Um, so chapter 27 is Jesper, and we're starting where now it's important to know what the time is. Yes. So each chapter is also labeled eight bells, eight o'clock. Okay. So 
Jesper is waiting in the incinerator room for Kaz and Nina. Inej, Wyland, and Matthias are already on the roof, and the alarm is going off and making Jesper pretty nervous. He hears soldiers running around all upstairs, and he's just like, okay, what is going on? I hope a guard does not just bust up into this laundry room right now. <laughs> and Nina finally comes in, and unfortunately, she says she doesn't know where Kaz is. She was hoping that he would already have been there, and so... Because they got split up. Right, but that was not the plan. Right. They weren't supposed to split up, so... They were supposed to meet. They were supposed to... Yeah, they are supposed to be going into the incinerator room together. So Nina... Goes ahead, climbs up the rope. Jesper's kind of like sitting there like, oh my God, I have to get up this rope right now. I don't know if I can really wait for Kaz. Last m minute, Kaz bolts through the door. And what is going on? He's got blood all over his shirt. Mm -hmm. dun, dun, dun. What's going on? Well, we don't know yet. So Jasper, Jasper, Jasper. I turned him into a He's southern not a friendly ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Jasper. We've got that southern twang. <laughs> we are recording from Nashville, Tennessee. That's right. Okay. Anyways. Forgive Jess us, y'all. Yes. Told you it's been a long day. Bless your little heart. I'm going to go from. Okay. Jesper climbs up and Kaz is just directly behind him on that rope. Kaz shuts the incinerator door and they are up and out. Jesper is wondering why Kaz and Nina split up. Um, why he's got blood all over himself. And how they're going to get out now he starts thinking that like okay things are our plan has kind of fallen apart so we've got to figure this out so the alarm is still going off um jesper reaches the top and wyland and matthias pull him over when kaz makes it to the top he asks where nina and inej are and matthias informs him that they are actually already on top of the embassy roof uh inej has secured a tether so that they can make it over they all make it to where Nina and Inej are on top of the embassy. Nina is trying to get all the rubber off of Inej's heels. Because remember, she was up in that incinerator melting. Mm -hmm. So she's got melted rubber on her feet. Ow. <laughs> Kaz commands Jesper to help. And he really doesn't want to. But what he's trying to get him to do is use his Grisha powers. And he doesn't really want to do it because he doesn't want Nina to know. But he's got to help a good girl out. Gotta yeah. help your Judy. Mm -hmm. Gotta help your good Judy. You have to. So, goes over. He starts helping try to get this rubber off. Nina sees. Um, and the alarm finally stops ringing. Nina tells them about running into the guards, what happened to her, and um, that it happened at the stairs, and that might have been what set off the alarm because she ran into those soldiers, and she had to shoot some, and it just it got chaotic. Nina wouldn't have had to be in the stairs if Kaz hadn't gone off on his own. So they all inquire Kaz, and they want to know, you know, what's going on? Why did you leave? And he tells them that he had a hunch and wanted to check out the fifth floor cells. He tells them that he was looking for Pekka Rollins to find out who leaked their information. Hmm. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, definitely not part of the plan. So he tells them that he didn't find him and that the blood on his shirt is actually from a run-in with a guard. Jesper All doesn't lies. Yeah, Jesper doesn't believe it. I don't believe it. Cass says he made a bad call, but that still does not get them out of the situation, which is true, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, bad call, but really we're in the middle of like a really dangerous place. We can discuss that once we get out. Yeah. So I understand him kind of being like, yeah, let's move on. And um so, it was the yellow protocol alarm that went off. Uh, Matthias tells them that it was a sector disturbance. The Fjordans must think that someone was trying to break out. So, Wyland thinks they should forget all about Bolio Bayer and just focus on getting out alive. Matthias tells them that the checkpoints will be on high alert now because of the yellow protocol alarm. They need to hurry, and Nina says she's not leaving without Yul Bayer. So Wyland expresses his concern about how dangerous it will be if they go to the White Island. It will be very hard to escape, and I see his point. Mm -hmm. They see below, and when I was reading this and actually through the rest of the book, I kept on <laughs> referring to the map. I'm just saying, if anybody out there wants to do that, it's some kind, sometimes kind of neat to get a visual right. because I was like, 
where is all this? And like, it just kind of helped, especially in this chapter. Cause I was like, where are they going from there to there? Mm-hmm. And there's a tether. So like, I don't know. It put a nice visual so in, in the my, front of the book, in the front of the book. Yes. There's yep. a really cool map um, of the ice court. So they see below in the party that the guards have added another checkpoint below allowing people to cross over um, that are allowing the people to cross over into the glass bridge onto the glass bridge. So another checkpoint. They all think it's pretty much over. And they're like, doom, doom, doom. But Inez says she has an idea for getting on the White Island. Her and Anina can go in as as part of the menagerie. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's a not a bad idea. But that's um. So that's end of chapter twenty seven. End of twenty eight. Dun dun dun. We switch over to Inez at mm-hmm. eight and a half bells. So a half an hour has passed. So Inez's bright idea is they're going to put on the costumes since the costumes are like cloaks and hoods with yeah. the menagerie. Kaz announces that Matthias held out some information on us, which is pretty hypocritical because Kaz is known to yeah. withhold information. Says if the bridge is impassable, there has to be another way to get out because the royal family can't be stuck if something happens with the bridge. Yeah. Matthias is like, yeah, okay, but it's messy. Kaz says they're going to go with black protocol which confuses everyone he says quote the prison gate is already locked up tight because of yellow protocol the embassy gate is a bottleneck crammed with guests the fjordans aren't going to get the troops through there jesper that leaves the gate in the druskela sector for you and wyland to handle you use it to engage black protocol then wreck it break it badly enough that any guards who manage to mobilize can't get out to follow us of course, we don't really know exactly what that plan right. is yet. No. He does explain it to everyone, but we don't hear it yet. As the reader, nope, we do not know. But Inej explains it as mad. Yep. So her and Nina start getting ready. Nina gives them some temporary tattoos, which, you know, is going to be weird for Inej because she literally cut that out of her arm already. Yeah. <laughs> And they all get ready to split up. And she notices, Inej notices some intensity between Nina and Matthias. And they walk away, leaving Inej and Kaz to talk. They have, I don't know, kind of a tender moment. She tells him that she's leaving the dregs once she gets her money. He agrees that she should. She cups his cheek and she wants more from him. And he can't do it. And so she says it's not enough for her. Wow. Yeah. So Nina and Inej hang out at the edge of the dome, waiting on the menagerie. Nina asks if the hall is really that important to Inej, and she answers, quote, I'm not sure why I began this, she admitted, but I know why I, w- why I have to finish. I know why fate brought me here, why it placed me in the path of this prize. She was being vague, but she wasn't ready. She wasn't yet ready to speak of the dream that had ignited in her heart. A crew of her own, a ship under her command, a crusade. It felt like something extraordinary if it wasn't forced to bloom too soon. She didn't even know how to sail. And yet part of her wanted to tell Nina all of it. Nina didn't. If Nina didn't choose to go back to Ravka, a heart render would be an excellent addition to her crew. End quote. So that wow. we have um, kind of an idea of what Inej's next steps are. We know she wants to leave. Yeah, but we... But this is kind of her idea of what she wants to do uh, as far as, like, what the crusade is. I don't know. That's still cool, though. Yeah. I see Inej in that. Yeah, absolutely. A little pirate. Yeah. She's she's, so cute. And she doesn't even know how to sail. I know. But she just wants to do it. So cute. It's cool. And her and Nina might, like, sail off into the sunset. Yeah. Uh, So the menagerie shows up, and with a whistle between Inej and Jesper, the plan starts. They see a group of four that have a Suli lynx and a Kalish mare, and mm. they, very clumsily Nina, move through the air ducts to get to them. Uh. They watch from above as the girls are escorted into a room and patted down by the guards. The guards finally leave and say they have five minutes to change. They pop out. Nope. Because I forgot my little favorite part there. Inej (laughs) tells Nina to go, but Nina can't. And the little cute part of where she says, you need to move. 
Right. <laughs> and she's like, but why? Because I need a clear line of sight and all I can see is your butt. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just this cute little like it funny is. moment. So Nina makes them all pass out. Um, and then they pop out. <laughs> then they, pop out. <laughs> they strip the Suli and Kalish girl and bound all of them. Nina um, bled the girls, the, K- the Gala- Kalish girls, yeah. red color into hers, leaving her with like white hair. Like she took all the pigment out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the eyes are also different. So um, Nina's eyes are green, but the Kalish girls are blue, and that just can't be helped. So real quickly, just to let you know, the Kalish, that language is means that they're from the Northern Isles, which is, a, if you look at your Ravka map, it's in the very left corner, just so you know. So I had to figure that out. <laughs> well, that's probably why it reminds me of Galish. Yes. Um, so Inej threw the girls in a cabinet, and they throw <laughs> on the costume. <laughs> I think it's so funny. I know. <clears throat> Little Inej, like, thrown all in there. Which I know. Is kinda... <laughs> you just picture this small girl, like, just throwing Stuffing people. them. <laughs> I imagine, because the cabinet, to me, is kind of small, and you have four girls that are going to fit in there, so I imagine <laughs> this little girl, like, stuffing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, stuffing that turkey. <laughs> so, of course, cabinet. the costumes don't fit properly. And Nej is tiny, <clears throat> so the costume's way too big. And Nina is indecently round. So voluptuous. <laughs> indecently round was Matthias's turn. Yeah. <laughs> so of course her costume is really tight around certain areas. And well. she says she's about to be really popular. <laughs> and that <clears throat> Matthias would not approve. Probably not. Inej says Matthias is like a tulip when she laughs. Oh, oh! So they cute. call him a little yellow tulip. Well, yeah. <laughs> so they know the guards are going to have to be distracted. Yeah. Because four girls went in and only two are coming out, so yeah. they're gonna have to figure something out. They are. Nina's like, no problem. I got this. Watch your him, and she makes one guard's nose bleed, and the other have an upset tummy. Mm. They make it to the line to get in with one more guard to go. And this one starts scrutinizing Nina's papers hard. Yeah. And Nina distracts him by flirting with him. And it works because he's like, yeah, I'll be at the party later. Dun, dun. Catch me inside. <laughs> but then Inej steps forward and he's not happy with her tattoo. No. And he puts her in a suspicious group <laughs> it's just like a group of people that are suspicious yeah. i'd hate to be in that group <laughs> I, I would totally be in that group so, <laughs> you're just suspicious i, I don't know what's going on but yeah. you, we're just you're suspicious don't be suspicious um so inej nods a little silent it's up to you nina and the chapter ends yeah so well that sucks now they're not together nope Nope. Okay. So, um, yeah. So now we go into chapter 29, which is Matthias, and this is Nine Bells. Um, so Matthias and, huh, in my notes, it says Cam. No, Cam. Cam. Sorry. Matthias, Cam, and Jasper. <laughs> We're just. Yeah. Matthias, yeah. Kaz, and Jasper. We'll make up our own people, clearly. And, yes. And Wylan are all on their way to the roof of the Druskela sector. I love this chapter, by the way. Um, that's why we're actually doing a scene out of it because I love it so much. Matthias is playing with the idea of not giving up, um, this last little bit of information to Kaz. He's kind of like playing around in his mind, wondering like, should I tell Kaz like everything? Cause he's obviously got some more information that they don't all know. And, of course. um, yeah, cause Matthias knows everything. And, but that really is annoying, Matthias, that Kaz knows him so well when he doesn't even know him. Mm -hmm. So here is a quote. In the distance, he heard the wolves barking and yapping in their kennel by the gatehouse, wondering where their masters had gone for the night. Would they recognize him if he approached with an outstretched hand? He wasn't sure he recognized himself. On the northern ice, his choices had seemed clear, but now his thoughts were muddied with these thugs and thieves, with Inej's courage and Jesper's daring, and with Nina, always Nina. He couldn't deny the relief he'd felt when she'd emerged from the incinerator shaft, disheveled and gasping, frightened but alive. 
when he and Wylan had pulled her out of the flu, he'd had to force himself to let her go. No, he would not look through those skylights. He could afford no more weaknesses, especially on this night. It was time to move forward. End quote. So I just love these little parts where we're... I just love Matthias and Nina. They're so cute right now. And we're just seeing more about Matthias and how he really is, like, finally, like, melting that, like, outer shell. His, his ice cold... His Drew ice cold heart. Drew heart. Drew Scala heart. They, I don't know why I'm so Southern tonight when I <laughs> just keep going to that twang. Um, so they reach the side of the moat and... They look out at the total awesomeness of what they're seeing. Um, it looks like, so the moat looks like it's frozen, but actually has only a wafer thin layer of ice and frost, which is really cool to me. Um, I just love that little snippet. Cousin Matthias um, rappelled down off of this wall and are going down to the shore of the moat. But real quickly, as Kaz is leaving and we're about to repel. He tells Jesper and Wylan to make sure they do whatever he has planned, which we don't know what that is, Mm -mm. but pretty much just saying, do what you got to do, and at 11 bells on the dot. And that's all we know. So they split up. So Kaz finishes repelling, gets down with Matthias, and they're right on the very edge of this moat um, up against the wall. So Matthias tells Kaz that the only way to cross this... I think it's crazy that, like, Kaz has no clue how to cross this yet. Matthias still has this information, and they're right there. Like, what a really crazy moment. He had to trust him. Like, I mean, what would you do then? I don't know. Right. <laughs> Anyways, like, there's, like, there's nowhere to go. So Matthias does tell Kaz that the only way to cross is on the second glass bridge that is not visible to the human eye. And he goes on to tell him that on Green Kala, in the initiation for the Druskela, go from aspirant to novice at the ash tree but first they have to get there by crossing the ice moat undetected so there's like this really crazy like just initiation that they have to do to become or finish their Druskela initiation so um i have to read this part so it's a quote just because it's written cool and it's yeah in truth elder Druskela simply passed the secret of the crossing along to aspirants they wished to see enter the order it was a way of culling the weak or those who had simply not meshed successfully with a group if you'd made friends if you'd proven yourself then one of the brothers would take you aside and tell you that on the night of the initiation you should go to the shore of the ice moat and run your hand along the wall of the Druskela sector At its center, you would find an etching of a wolf that marked the location of another glass bridge, not grand and arching like the one that spanned the moat from the embassy wing, but flat, level, and only a few feet wide. It lay just under the frozen skin of the surface, invisible if you didn't know to look for it. Commander Brum himself had been the one to tell Matthias how to find the secret bridge, as well as the trick for crossing it undetected. It took Matthias two passes along the wall before his fingers found the carved lines of the wolf. He rested his hands there briefly, feeling the traditions that connected him to the Order of, the, of Druskela, as old as the ice court itself, end quote. Just love that stuff. Just think that's so cool. So, um... Hope you guys are following along. It's just he's explaining how all this works. On this night is the night that actually this initiation is going on for this group of Druskela anyways. So it's a perfect night. And to he do would this. have gone through that too. So it's like a memory for him. Well, he had gone through it. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's done. Yeah. Because, but he would have been part of it too on the other side. So it wouldn't, it's kind of a really good time to be doing this because it wouldn't be uncommon if they did accidentally get caught trying to cross this bridge. You know, like, I mean, I I know it's the wrong time, but um, anyways, I just think it's neat. So Matthias finds the engraved wolf head and shows Kaz. Um, That's not all, though. They still have to cross undetected. So Matthias shows him that if he scrapes the wall, a white powder comes off that you have to cover yourself with. So that way, like, if you're covered in white, the guards that are looking over the moat won't see you. So you're crossing over this bridge that's not... That's just, it's interesting. So, in other words, you look like snow. <laughs> so no one can see you. And um, Camouflaged. Yeah, just, you better get all that Casper white on you. Because if not, I mean, the guards will see you. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, they're watching the moat. So, anyways, that is, we're just about to start our scene. This is where Kaz and Matthias begin to cross. 
and Terry's going to be playing Kaz, as she always does, and I will <laughs> be playing Matthias. So, um, does Matthias have a southern accent? No, I'm not going to give. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try not to. I don't know what's wrong. What's up with me? Um, so you've been around me too long, but you ain't that southern. More than you. I know. I don't have a southern accent, no. but I I don't know why. And I grew up in the south. I I sounded like this growing up too. We literally grew up very yeah. closely. I know. Together. Yeah, you were in the next subdivision. <laughs> I could have walked to your house. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, yeah, we're gonna do the scene. So, curtain up. All this to be a witch hunter, Kaz said behind him. The dregs need a better initiation. This is only one part of Rinkala. Yes. I know. Then a tree tells you the secret handshake. I feel sorry for you, Brecker. There is nothing sacred in your life. There was a long pause, and then Kaz said, You're wrong. The outer wall of the White Island loomed up before them, covered in a rippling pattern of scales. It took a moment to locate the ridge of scales that hid the gate. Only a short while ago, Druskela would have been gathered in this niche of the wall to become, to welcome their new brothers ashore. But now it was empty, the iron grating chained. Kaz made quick work of the lock, and soon they were in slender passage that would lead them to the gardens that backed the barracks of the royal guard. Were you always good at locks? No. How did you learn? The way you learn about anything. Take it apart. And the magic tricks? Kaz snorted. So you don't think I'm a demon anymore? I know you're a demon, but your tricks are human. Some people see magic trick and say, Impossible! They clap their hands, turn over their money, and forget about it ten minutes later. Other people ask how it works. They go home, get into bed, toss and turn, wondering how it was done. It takes them a good night's sleep to forget all about it. And then there are the ones who stay awake, running through the trick again and again, looking for that skip in perception, that crack in the illusion that will explain how their eyes got duped. They're the kind that won't rest until they've mastered that little bit of mystery for themselves. I'm that kind. You love trickery. I love puzzles. Trickery is just my native tongue. The gardens, Matthias said, pointing to the hedges up above. We can follow them all the way around to the ballroom. Just as they were about to emerge from the passage, two guards rounded the corner, both in black and silver Druskelly uniforms, both carrying rifles. Herjinga, one of them shouted in surprise. Prisoners. Sten! Without thinking, Matthias said, De Genet, Gel Comaden, stand down. Gel wills it so. They were the words of a Druskela commanding officer, and he delivered them with all the authority he'd ever learned to muster. The soldiers exchanged a confused glance. The moment of hesitation was enough. Matthias grabbed the first soldier's rifle and headbutted him hard. The Druskela collapsed. Kaz slammed into the old other soldier, knocking him over. The Druskela kept hold of his rifle, but Kaz slipped behind him and brought his forearm across the soldier's throat, applying pressure until the soldier's eyes shut and his head fell forward as he slipped into unconsciousness. Kaz rolled the body off of him and stood. The reality of the situation struck Matthias suddenly. Kaz hadn't picked up the rifle. Matthias had a gun in his hands, and Kaz Brecker was unarmed. They were standing over the bodies of two unconscious Druskela, men who were supposed to be Matthias's brothers. I can shoot him, Matthias thought. Doom Nina and the rest of them with a single act again. Matthias had the strange sense of his life viewed at the wrong the wrong way up. He was dressed in prison clothes, an intruder in the place he'd once called home. Who am I now? He looked at Kaz Brecker, a boy whose only cause was himself. Still, he was a survivor and his own kind of soldier. He had honored his bargain with Matthias. At any point, he might have decided that Matthias had served his purpose. Once he'd helped them draw up the plans, once they'd gotten past the holding cells, once Matthias had revealed the secret bridge, and whoever he'd become, Matthias was not going to shoot someone unarmed. He'd not yet sunk so far. Matthias lowered his weapon. A faint smile touched Kaz's lips. I wasn't sure what you'd do if it came down to this. Neither was I, Matthias admitted. Kaz lifted a brow, and the truth struck Matthias with the force of a blow. It was a test? You chose not to pick up the rifle? I needed to be sure you were really with us. All of us. 
How did you know I wouldn't shoot? Because, Matthias, you stink of decency. You're mad. Do you know the secret to gambling, Helvar? Kaz brought his good foot down on the butt of the fallen soldier's rifle. The gun flipped up. Kaz had it in his hands and pointed at Matthias in the space of a breath. He'd never been any, in any danger at all. Cheat. Now let's clean up and get those uniforms on. We have a party to go to. One day you'll run out of tricks, Demjin. You'd better hope it's not today. We'll see what this night brings, Matthias thought as he bent to the task. Trickery is not my native tongue, but I may learn to speak it yet. End scene. So I just love that because we, one, there was a lot of action in it. And we got to see that like Matthias, Kaz played a trick on Matthias too, mm -hmm. to see how that worked. And like Matthias passed it. Matthias yeah. totally had the opportunity to kind of almost get what he wanted earlier in the book. If you think about it, I mean, he, he kind of wanted to like turn everybody against. Right. Yeah. But he didn't do it. So. Cause he yeah. can't. And he's part of them. I'm feeling it. That's yeah. the end of the chapter, though. But <laughs> yes, I, it is. I'm just, I know, I love Matthias. So, end chapter. So, moving on into chapter 30. What? what? Following Jasper. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Jasper. Yeah. Nine bells and a quarter. Ooh. Getting those quarters. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know. Jasper and Wylan are on the Druskela roof, and Jasper is kind of excited. They're looking down oh, <laughs> through yes. a pyramid-shaped skylight into what looks like a training room. There's lots of weapons. Yes. The next pyramid skylight, when they look down in there, it looks like a little dining hall. And Jesper realizes that he's seeing Grisha hunting trophies. There are thousands of pieces of keftas. That's horrifying. Yeah. It's really sad. It is. Yeah. Uh, and the excitement clearly starts fading when uh, he's obviously thinking about the purple that he could have worn. Yeah, and they're like little itty bitty pieces of the keftas that they yes. would have worn. And there's it's like animal skins. Yeah, but when thousands you go hunting. of them. Mm -hmm. Thousands. Mm -hmm. and those are all human lives. Yes. Sorry. They <laughs> well. Sad. Yeah. They get to the gatehouse and see that only one guard is hanging out there chewing on some jerda. Jerda. <laughs> Not Parim. Not Parim, no. <laughs> Just Jerda. Yeah, because that would kill him. I think we read that in the... Yeah, if yeah, you're a human, he's not, you'd die. Because he's not Grisha. Uh, Jesper starts to think about his past. His mother was Zimini, and his father was Kalish. Okay. Which is where he got his gray eyes. His Pretty. dad had talked him into hiding his power as he had grown up in kind of an unsteady time. Yeah. Uh, but now that things were getting better... He's thinking maybe he should go to Ravka and learn more about his powers that he didn't get a chance to do. Yeah, I think it sounds cool. Uh, he snaps back to real time, though, and tells Wylan he's going in and not much else. He tries to quietly secure the rope to the roof, but he just makes way too much noise. And two guards just show up. So now there's three guards and they're all looking around trying to figure out what this noise is. And right before they look up, to discover Jesper, Wyland starts singing the national anthem <laughs> like a drunken Fjordan. So cute. <laughs> I totally imagine, like I could imagine those. Mm -hmm. As the guards are laughing and are distracted, Jesper jumps down, snaps the first guy's neck and grabs his rifle, jams the butt of the rifle into the second guy's face, and the third one raises his weapon, but Wyland snags his arms. And Jesper rams the butt of the gun into the guard's stomach and then hits him in the jaw twice. Wow. And then they wait. And no one else comes. Yeah. Wyland wants to wake the guards up to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesper suggests, let's just gag them and leave them there. <laughs> yes. They find the room with the gate mechanism. It's like a long winch, handles at both ends. And Wyland just kind of says, huh. Which makes Jesper go, what? What's up? <laughs> Wyland was expecting rope or cable, but it's a steel chain. Yeah, that's a huh. Yeah, that's so a they will have to like actually cut through that metal. Yeah, so that when the gate comes down, it can't be lifted again. That yeah. was the whole plan. Exactly to dissemble it, which would have been easier had it been rope. Oh yeah, obviously. <laughs> but nope, it's big heavy chain. 
So the clock now strikes 10 bells. Uh oh. And Jesper is going to have to weaken the links. And Wylan has the shears from the laundry. Okay. I <laughs> know <laughs> that's. <laughs> I hope this works. <laughs> I imagine like opening the shears up really wide and it's like, rrr, 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 yeah. rrr, or like sawing. <laughs> like, ah, God, this bush. <laughs> the words of God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesper oh, realizes great. that there are six different people doing six different things, like all the crows. So yeah. that means. A lot can go wrong because they ran into that problem. So oh, how yeah. many other problems are there? End of chapter. Wow. Oh, my gosh. So I like th all these little stories. You get more of them. So I was I didn't know that that chapter ended there. But gosh, see, I shouldn't have read odd <laughs> because like I know I want to <laughs> read more of that. Um, wait to get more confused. Um, anyways, so chapter 31, last chapter we're covering, Nina, nine bells and a half chime. Whoa, half whoa. chime. Half. Do, 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 do. Ding. Oh, sorry. I'll stop hitting the mic. I'm sorry. Okay. It's a half chime. I had to, like, do something. I don't know. Okay. So Nina realizes that Inej is a smart girl. So we got to remember, where were we with that story? Nina and Inej just got, um, had to be split up because Inej got taken away. Because Inej is suspicious. Yep, she's going to be a part of a suspicious group of <laughs> <Yes>. people. <laughs> so Nina now is the only person part of in her two part plan, her two person part plan, because it's supposed to be her and Anesh. Yes, but Anesh isn't there. So Nina realizes and that Anesh is a smart girl and that she unfortunately is just going to have to do this on her own, but she's going to be okay. And um, so. We kind of walking with Nina as she's just kind of flowing with this party. So here's a quote. The glass bridge rose before her in a gleaming arc, shimmering in the blue flames of the lanterns on its spires. All around her people laughed and clung to one another as they climbed higher above the ice moat, its surface shining below, a near-perfect mirror. The effect was disconcerting, dizzying. Her two tight beaded, beaded slippers seemed to float in midair. The people beside her looked as if they were walking on nothing at all. Again, she had the unpleasant understanding that this place must have been built by fabricated fabricator craft in some distant past. Fjordan claimed that the construction of the ice court was the work of a god or Senjan Egmond, one of the saints they claimed had Fjordan blood. But in Ravka, people had begun to rethink the miracles of the saints. Had they been true miracles or simply the work of talented Grisha? Was this bridge a gift from Gel, an ancient product of slave labor? Or had the ice court been built in a time before Grisha had come to be viewed as monsters by the Fjordans? End quote. We've got a lot in there. Um, I love that end part. Just a lot to really think about. Especially, like, you know, the people are starting to rethink about the saints. Yeah. Like, I mean, are they Grisha? Which, I mean, we kind of got that at the end of the trilogy. Yes. Learning more about... Um, ooh. Alina? No, not Alina. The saint they kept on following. Um, oh, ooh. <laughs> yeah what was his what was uh-huh um, yeah the fabricator yes yep. who got thrown that into guy. the river with the chains yes oh we're not gonna remember his that's name. fine they'll come for us i know we're they, oh, god i don't want to get come for <laughs> <laughs> so anyway sorry guys we're just it's exhausting. Anyways, let's continue into Sixy Crows. So the inner ring that Nina can now see from inside is in the shape of a leviathan swallowing its own tail. By the way, leviathan is comes from a Hebrew word, which I thought was so interesting. It comes from Hebrew text. Hebrews, like, I mean, came up with the word leviathan. Isn't that interesting? I don't know. To me, it was. It is. Because, I mean, it's, like, supposedly, like, this dragon shape, but it, like, went down this long chain. to. Be it actually was a whale, I think, in the beginning and ended up being, like, a dragon. Hmm. Wikipedia it if you want to. An ice dragon. I did. Yeah, so this is an ice dragon, though. So Nina notices that it looks like there aren't that many guards patrolling within the ring, but she does remember that Matthias told her that security actually tightens up the further you get in. So that means... It might not look like there's a lot of Drew Scuttle around, but you better watch who you're talking mm -hmm. to because there are. So there's going to be more people. They're just disguised most mm -hmm. likely or hiding better or whatever. So 
It might look nice and comfortable. Sorry, it ain't. So she enters the ballroom and has a moment of comfort because what does she see? She sees Matthias and Kaz in Druskella uniforms, and that makes her feel like she's not alone. It scares her that she sees Matthias in this Druskella <laughs> uniform. But Flashbacks. I bet seeing Kaz in one is just like, oh, look at that cute, because he's just this skinny little guy, and he doesn't have blonde hair. He's not like total typical yeah, person, Druskella. It's probably kind of humorous. Oh, I bet. Totally humorous. So um, here's a quote. She didn't risk so much as a nod of acknowledgement towards them, but continued up the stairs to the balcony on the second floor where she could get a better look at the flow of the crowd. It was a trick she'd learned in school from Zoya Nazielinski. There were patterns in the way people moved, the way they clustered around power. They thought they were drifting, milling aimlessly, but really they were being drawn toward people of status. Not surprisingly, there was a large concentration eddying around the Fjordan Queen and her attendants. Strange, Nina thought, observing their white gowns. In Ravka, white was a servant's color, but that crown wasn't anything to sniff at. Twisting spines of diamonds that looked like branches glowing with new frost, end quote. So, you know, I mean, whenever we have a mention of Zoya, I'm just gonna, like, put that in there, <laughs> because she's just so cool. Um, so, she decides to, um, she's gotta find someone that knows about Bolyul Bayor's location. That is what her job is. So mm -hmm. she's supposed to try to find somebody that has that location. So she realizes that maybe somebody, like an officer, a high-ranking officer, would probably have that information. She's got to, like, get it out of them. So she's looking at everybody at this party, and um, while that's happening, a man tries to get some alone time with Nina because remember what she's dressed up like. She's busting out of her menagerie. Exactly. Costume. And she's dressed up like she that's her job. Mm-hmm. I mean, the menagerie. Mm-hmm. You go for a little... They're ladies of a certain... Ladies of the night. Yes. <laughs> that's the nicest, g way you can say that yeah. on here. <laughs> I was trying to. I was trying to figure out. I was like, uh, can't say that word. Um, So, a man comes up and tries to purchase Nina, in other words. Um, But, and... He's pretty drunk and kind of is being rude. So she uses her powers and pretty much slows his heart. He passes out. He'll be fine in about 10 minutes. So she makes her move by... Um, she keeps trying to find somebody. And she finally thinks she sees this cluster of all these, like, lieutenants and things. And she makes her move and accidentally spills this glass of champagne. And it ends up helping her meet this general. And the general is trying to make a move on her... All of a sudden, when another man shows up and intrudes, dun dun dun, because mm -hmm. Nina looks up and realizes none other, this general that is interrupting, is none other than Jarl Jarl Broom, Matthias's no. captain and the man that treated her so harshly on that slaver ship, and that's where it ends. Mm -hmm. But um, dr mic drop. So that was a lot. Cliffhanger. It is. Wait till next week. <laughs> God, we stop at a really big cliffhanger because, yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> it's that time, y'all, for... Creature Cast, Cast News! We're going to change that, by the way. We're going to, like, <laughs> do something better. And, like, we're going to use that. Like, but I want to, like, say something, like, actually talk during it or something. I don't know. Yeah. Because I don't know. Um. Okay, well, I don't have any Grish Cast news, do you? <laughs> Other than... Well, we do have some that's yes. related to us. So and how thank we... you so far for everybody that has emailed Let's... us questions. Yes, those. Um. So we're in the works of all that. Good news, we can't give you that much information, but it is working. Yes. It is coming. And we're getting more and more information about it, and we're really excited. All we can say is that... You should keep listening to us. <laughs> yes. And I'm not kidding because... You're not going to want to miss it. You won't because you will actually get some exclusive information yes. that other people won't be unless you listen to our podcast. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets out that it came out on our podcast, then it will become news. And but... you can say you heard it first. Exactly. Um, and we don't even know what that is. Not yet. But we know... We'll all hear it together. But we're working and we're so excited. <laughs> And we've got all your questions, so we're going to 
work with that. We're going to figure it out. We still don't know the time frame that we have, Lee, but we do know we have her. And she's excited to meet us and be a part of this because who wouldn't? Right. I mean, come on. So we're so fun. Yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. Duh. <laughs> so she's just going to love us. Um, anyway, so that is that's some great Grisha cast news. So mm, it is. I'm busted. <laughs> um, for thinking we didn't have any. <laughs> Um, so continue to go on to Apple Podcast and rate us. And next week, we are gonna we're just gonna finish out that part. Um, it's a total like forty one pages, but so it's chapters thirty two through thirty eight. It seems like a lot, but it's really not. They're short spurts of all those stories. So right, get yeah. ready to feel like it's gonna be really easy for people to read because you just want to know what happens in the next chapter. And um, so it's just exciting. We're at a very exciting part of the book. We are. So, yeah. So um, anyways, well, that is it, y'all. So thank you so much. And there it was again, y'all. Y'all. Uh, maybe next episode I won't be Southern. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll try to be British or Australian or something. <laughs> Just go back to being Jewish. That, <laughs> that Jew. Can you speak Jewish? <laughs> I hate it when people say that to me. I know. Yeah. And I'm like, it's Hebrew. <laughs> God, <laughs> Duolingo, come on. Duolingo. <laughs> so, it, get some education. Yeah, and it's free on, on your iPhone. Oh. Okay, well, <laughs> see you all next week. No mourners. No funerals. This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Instagram at GrishaCast, YouTube at GrishaCast, and Facebook at GrishaCast.